Good morning, and welcome to our third week of a five-part series on the giving and discipleship. On the first week of our journey, we focused on gratitude and how the spiritual practice of gratitude can ground our journey as a disciple of Jesus. In the second week, we reflected upon giving as a sustained commitment without controlling the outcome. Today, we focus on the discipline of giving through the lens of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 and 7, wherein St. Paul shares the importance of sharing as a response to loving God and our neighbor. Today's announcements. We are asked this week to hold in our thoughts and prayers Mark Haynes, who has undergone surgery and is at home recuperating, and also to hold Alice Acorn in our prayers, who is currently in hospital. For those who are uncertain as to how to make their regular offering, now that we're meeting online, we have five choices. The first is regular mail by sending um, your offering to our Kings United Pastoral Charge mailing address. There are also number two. The second option is drop-off locations and you can drop it off at either Kathy Williams or George Matheson's at Springwater Farms. The third is an e-transfer. You can now e-transfer your offering to our email. And these are all lowercase letters. K-U-P-C 2021 at Outlook.com. These e-transfers will be auto-deposited, so there's no need for passwords. And if you have any questions about this option, please email our treasurer, Craig Norton. Our fourth option is PAR, and uh, you can talk to Craig about setting that up as well. And the fifth option is uh, Canada Helps. This is an online option and can be accessed on our Kings United .ca website on the donations page. It is that time of year again and Tracy would like all our committees to have their year-end reports in to her as soon as possible. And we have a thank you letter on behalf of the staffs, staff and residents of Coville Manor in Surrey. Um, they write, we would like to thank all those who donated gifts, made monetary contributions, or helped in any way to ensure our residents enjoyed the past holiday season. We are very blessed to be part of such a caring and supportive community. Thanks for all you do and all you give. It is appreciated immensely. Best wishes to all for a wonderful, healthy, and happy 2022. In our regional prayer cycle, uh, we are asked to pray for Kingsley, Burton Pastoral Charge. And thank you for all you do for your community of faith and in service to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us center ourselves in Christ and in Christ's call to us by remembering together our mission statement. We are a faith community committed to serving God and the people of the world. We endeavor to encourage and support all people on their spiritual journey and to grow in acceptance, responsibility, love, and grace. Lighting of the Christ candle. As we gather to worship, we light this candle to remember the light and love that Jesus shared with so many. He did not keep this light to himself. After Jesus died, his friends continued to share the light. For generations upon generations, the light has been shared, and love continues. Jesus is still with us. 
Today, in love, we welcome the light, the light of the world. Our call to worship for this morning, what have you brought to give today? We have brought our hopes and our fears. What have you brought to give today? We have brought our joys and our sorrows. What have you brought to give today? We have brought our prayer and our voices. What have you brought to give today? We have brought our talents and our money. Let us give all of ourselves in this time of worship. Let us, with gratitude and joy, worship God. The opening prayer. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee, or laid aside for thee, exalted for thee, or brought low for thee. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine, and I am thine. So be it, and the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. Gracious God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, hear us as we offer our confession. Gracious One, we confess that too often we give sparingly, yet expect to reap abundance. Too often we give the bare minimum out of fear that we do not have enough. Other times we give sparingly because we believe our efforts do not make much difference. Give us clarity to see our giving as our way of celebrating your goodness to us and our contribution toward caring for those in need in the world you love. Help us to trust you to supply what we need and give us the courage to share what we have, being fully confident in your continued provision in the name of Christ, we pray. Let us enter into a time of silent prayer. Friends, know that God's forgiveness is available in abundance. It will never run out. Receive forgiveness. Be free from the fears that affect your living and giving and forgive yourself and others as you have been forgiven this day. Amen. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. Thanksgiving. I'll be 
one of the hymns we often sing at Kings United is Come In and Sit Down. It states, come in and sit down, for you are part of the family. And that is a good description of the relationship of the members of the congregation to each other and of the relationship of our congregation to the wider church. But this is not the only family that each of us belongs to. There is, of course, one's biological family, but in my case, there is also my work family, those special people with whom I work, the family that is my professional colleagues, and the family that is the community in which I live. The series of stewardship services this month are based on 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And in verses 6 and 7, Paul reminds us that he who sows generously will reap generously. And although this is obviously true of agriculture, it is equally true of acts of kindness and of consideration. The second verse reminds us that God wants us to be a cheerful giver, not just do kindness out of obligation. That can be the harder part. Few will have a chance to change the course of history or to do a great act of saving someone from danger. But in the simple act of holding a door open for someone, we sow as Paul describes, and in turn, we will likely reap kindness. That is true in all the families to which we belong. If we sow with a generous heart, we will deepen and enrich our relationships and thus our lives and those around us. I have a friend who always ends his emails with a quote. He changes his quote every couple of weeks. Just before Christmas, it was a quote from the American author, Annie Dillard. How we spend our days is, of course, how we spend our lives. To be a cheerful giver in small things may be a place to start. Good morning. When I first thought about the topic of relationship, I marveled and struggled at the wide range of possible relationships one could think about in relation to church. While there was clearly a relationship with worship, God, faith, generally all things holy, I chose a slightly different theme. I thought about my relationship with the congregation, my closer relationship with family members and friends, but more broadly with all those who are members of this pastoral church. We do all share something that keeps us coming back, be it year-round or seasonal. My relationship with the church goes back many years. My mother and father motivated me and my siblings to go to church and Sunday school. I was occasionally involved in the church service in some way, and that made me feel like a part of the church. I was a member of this congregation until I started moving around for work, and then joined other congregations in the communities where I worked, forging relationships with those churches. I was really pleased a few years ago when I finally felt I had put down my roots solidly enough upon retirement that I could once again be a member of this pastoral church. Although at first I considered myself to be a seasonal congregant, I still found myself becoming involved in a number of church activities that required some year-round commitment. Cementing a relationship with the church in general, but especially with this pastoral church. While I have served on some committees over my years here, and still do, I felt a significant change in the last few years. While I used to travel to church occasionally during the off-season, like when I was on collection duty, I now feel that I only occasionally miss church because of some other commitment. There may be other reasons, but the COVID pandemic has deepened my commitment and relationship with this church. The role of being responsible for recording the names of members who wish to attend puts me in a contact with the members more frequently and gives me the feeling of a closer relationship with the church and the people of the church. Being actively involved with the church and the people of the church has made the relationship very real.
Not by your finger, not by your anger, will our world order change in a day. But by your people, fearless and faithful, small paper lanterns lighting the way. Brush us the morning, sure as the sunrise, God always faithful, you do not change. Fresh as the morning, sure as the sunrise, God always faithful, you do not change. Hope we must carry shining and certain through all our turmoil terror and loss bonding us gladly one to the other till our world changes facing the cross fresh as the morning sure as the sunrise god always you do not change fresh as the morning sure as the sunrise god always faithful you do not Gracious God, as we turn to your word for us, may the Spirit of God rest upon us. Help us to be steadfast in our hearing, in our speaking, in our believing, and in our living. Amen. The scripture reading is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under, under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Mm. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We have been reflecting for the past two weeks on the discipline of giving. If you have missed any of those weeks, here is the short version. In week one, we highlighted the fact that the practice of gratitude can make a difference in us and influence how we live differently and reach out to the world. In week two, we learned that as disciples and followers of Christ Jesus, giving goes beyond simple self-interest. It is a matter of prolonged, enduring commitment to God. This week, through the eyes of St. Paul, we are exploring the potential within the act of giving to stir greater generosity when it springs from loving intention. 
Today in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 6 to 7, Paul writes this portion of his letter to the Corinthian church to address one specific area of their Christian witness, and that is their financial giving to support those in need in Jerusalem. This letter was written to stir the people to give diligently as a famine had been sweeping across Judea. Within today's two verses, St. Paul lifts up two key principles for us to consider as we think about giving. One, that our giving matters. And two, that our giving should be intentional and with love for God and neighbor. Using the example of sowing and reaping, Paul highlights that generosity begets greater generosity. He asserts, the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. This, as a principle, holds true in the natural and spiritual world. It is a principle that would be obvious to a farmer or a gardener. There is a direct relationship between the abundance and sparsity of a harvest based on the quantity sown. If we scatter seeds sparingly in a field, it's going to produce a meager crop. If we scatter seed generously, it will produce an abundant crop. The word sparingly is a good translation of the Greek word phedomenos, as it means to hold back, to give with restraint, to measure with a teaspoon rather than a scoop. Paul highlights that restraint reveals the state of the heart of the giver. The seed you and I sow may be money, it may be our time or our skills and talents. Whatever it is, St. Paul is asking Corinth and us to consider if there is more that we can give to the needs around us and to commit to taking some time to reflect on what it is that might be holding us back from giving. Are we giving from a sense of scarcity rather than a sense of bounty? Are we giving from a heart that fears that we do not have enough? Are we giving from a heart that forgets that all we have comes from God, the provider and sustainer? Are we giving from a heart that struggles to trust God? Sometimes we might forget what Jesus says about giving. From Luke chapter 6 verse 38. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap for the measure you give will be the measure you get back. And from Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 to 33. Do not worry about what you will eat or what you will drink or about what you will wear. Is life not more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But strive first for the kingdom of God and God's righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Today, Paul presents us with the example and principle of a bountiful heart-centered giving. Using the Greek word eulogia, a combination of two words, eu meaning good and logos meaning word. Eulogia literally means good word and blessing. The term carries the idea that those who bless will be blessed and those who give from the heart will receive from the heart. Where does this blessing come from? There are several directions, but let's focus on two. One, the act of giving itself. 
Those who give from the heart speak of feeling a sense of satisfaction and joy. And this gives credence to Jesus' words, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Acts 20, verse 35. And two, God. God promises blessing for those who give from the heart. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17 reads, Whoever is kind to the poor gives to God and will be repaid in full. Proverbs 28, verse 27 reads, Whoever gives to the poor will lack nothing. And Psalm 41, verses 1 to 3 reads, Happy are those who consider the poor. God delivers them in the day of trouble. God protects them and keeps them alive. They are called happy in the land. Those who do not give up the poor to the will of their enemies, God sustains them on their sickbed. And in their illness, God heals their infirmities. Paul also says, each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion. Paul tells us when we give, it should not be a painful experience. It should not feel like someone is guilting us, twisting our arms or holding us to ransom. Paul does not want us to grieve the money we put in the offering plate or give out of guilt. Paul advises to give as you have made up your mind. So think about it before you reach a decision, before you commit yourself. When we think about it, this makes sense because our circumstances differ. And even from one moment to the next, our circumstances can change. And we need to reflect on those circumstances as we contemplate our giving. In other words, when we are asked to give, we are invited to deliberately reflect on the need and also to reflect on our circumstances and then decide on our gift based both on what we have to give and what the size of the needs are that we are trying to meet. While it is our responsibility to give both to the work of God and to help those in need, Christian giving should always be a product of thoughtful discipleship. When we give, it's not to be done under compulsion or because we are made to feel bad about the suffering of others. We should give because we want to give. And what we give should be a conscious decision based on the depth of the need and the extent of our resources. What God desires are happy people who are happy to give because they give as they are able to give and are committed to their giving in response to God's generous grace. And so they can contribute to God's will, flourishing here on earth as it is in heaven. Happiness and giving comes when we give with love in mind. When God gives, God gives with love in mind. For God so loved the world that God gave God's only Son. John chapter 3, verse 16. This is what St. Paul means when he says, For God loves a cheerful giver. A cheerful and bountiful giver is one who gives with love on their mind, who gives from a heart that wants to share, out of love for those in need, out of love for God's work, and out of the desire for that work to live on, to continue. This morning, St. Paul invites us to give out of love, not out of shame or fear or even out of a sense of responsibility. St. Paul asks us simply to give out of love, a love that has no limits, a love that has but one desire, and that is to see that the receivers experience a better life and to ensure that the good work of God continues. 
This is St. Paul's point. Give thoughtfully, give intentionally, and above all else, give with love in mind. For God loves a cheerful giver. And a cheerful giver is one who gives thoughtfully and on purpose. All glory is our God's. Amen. Let us pray for the people of God and for God's world. Loving God, giver of all creation, we pray to you in faith with thanksgiving in our hearts. We give you thanks for all you do to care for us. Give us grace to care for others and to love others as Christ loves us. We are grateful that your love is steadfast and enduring and offered to all through Jesus Christ. We ask your help for all who suffer and strength for those who bring your help to them. Make us faithful stewards of your goodness. Answer my prayer, Lord Jesus. Teach me to Compassionate Jesus, healer of all creation, we pray for the sick and those who sit with grief and all those who are in need of your healing touch. We pray for the ministry of healing and caring that comes from the church and other organizations. We pray for the leaders of nations for honesty, integrity, justice, and compassion in national, provincial, and international politics and for financial resources to be distributed equitably. We live in a world where people struggle to meet their basic needs while others are denied basic human rights. War and corruption stifle the economic and social advancement of many. Make us faithful stewards of your goodness. Answer my prayer. Holy Spirit, sanctifier of all creation, help us to be generous in meeting the needs of others through the gifts of our time, 
kind words, and a listening ear. Bless those whose lives are touched through our gifts to mission and service. We pray for those known to us who are in need of your care for their minds, body, or spirit at this time. We take a moment of silence now to lift up the names of those we carry in our hearts today. Make us faithful stewards of your goodness as we join our voices together and pray the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Offering invitation. As we offer our gifts today, let us give considering the needs we are trying to help in this community, across Canada, and around the world. Give with this in mind, every kind of gift, in any amount, makes a difference in the lives of those who have little or none. Today, I invite you, if you do not already give, to make a difference in lives across Canada and around the world through mission and service. Let us pray. May the gifts we offer today be dedicated to your work, O oh God, to save and change lives, to help people live with meaning and purpose, and to further your call for love and justice in the world. As you have given freely to us, we respond with joy. Bless us and our gifts to be a blessing. Amen. <laughs> Friends and siblings in Christ, may God, the giver of all good gifts, pour out blessing that you may always have all that you need, abundance enough that you may know the joy of generosity and the blessing of God Almighty 
the Creator, the Christ, and the Comforter be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you. 